Welcome everyone to my home. My name is Inez Jajai. I am the bilingual coordinator here at the Cradle of Aviation Museum. Um, today we're going to be actually doing some Puerto Rican tostones with a garlic sauce that they love. Um, this week we have been highlighting and previous week um, Felix Regal Carrera. He is a Puerto Rican pilot. Um, born in Savannah Grande in Puerto Rico and he actually enlisted to the US Army and became a pilot. Not only did he do that, he also joined after World War One. He also um, he also went to the Marines and joined the Marines and finished his pilot training at the Marines. At the end of World War I, he returned to Puerto Rico and he had still many goals and he made sure that he informed everyone about his goals. One of his main goals was that he wanted to own an airplane. And the wonderful thing was that his brothers, his four brothers, actually helped him financially buy his first airplane and his first airplane was the Curtis Jenny and luckily for us here at the cradle we actually do have a Curtis Jenny that you are more than welcome to come and visit and look at our Curtis Jenny but let's go back to what we're actually here for which is to learn how to make some Puerto Rican tostones with garlic sauce. So the first thing you would want to have is, you want to have the following ingredients with you. You want to have a green plantain. Make sure it is completely green. Um, if you notice that the plantain is becoming ripe, starting to turn its um, skin color yellow, you do not want to use it because it will take it will change the taste of it. Um, we don't want a sweet plantain. We want it to actually not be ripe. So make sure you have a green plantain. The next ingredient that you will need to have is garlic. Now the garlic needs to be peeled. You can use about I would say if you get three big clovers of garlic should be enough to make two teaspoons of garlic so what you want is two teaspoons of mice garlic and i'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes you also want to have a quarter cup of olive oil you're going to use salt and pepper as well now the salt and pepper is to your taste all right um also, if you like the garlic flavor, you can add a little bit more garlic to add that little spice kick to it, to the sauce. It's up to you. Um, but if you don't like garlic too much, you can actually reduce the amount of garlic also. It's all to your preference. And now we're going to actually begin our cooking process. Now that I have my garlic all peeled, I have about here five clovers, which should give me about two teaspoons of garlic. So the first thing you want to do is you want to cut the garlic, you want to mice it. So you want to cut it thin and then chop it very small. Make sure it's in small pieces because this is what actually is going to give the taste. Um, this Good taste to the tostones. So, as you can see, I'm cutting my garlic here. And making sure it's nice and fine. Because you want to make sure that this um, sauce is delicious and you're going to enjoy it. Trust me, if you love garlic, I'm one that loves the flavor of garlic. So now that we have 
our garlic mixed, be, um, nicely fine and chopped. What you want to have is a small saucepan, and what you're going to pour into the saucepan is about um, a quarter a cup of oil. So now that I have my quarter cup of oil, I am going to turn on my stove and I am going to put it at medium flame and I'm going to add my nice garlic to the oil. So as you can see, I put my garlic there and I am going to add some salt because you want some flavor. All right. And as you can see, I, I, I had like a, a, about a teaspoon of salt should be more than enough. You can add more salt depending on the flavor. And also, I'm going to add a little bit of brown pepper. I love to use my wooden spoons because right now you're going to let the garlic, the oil to bubble. All right. You do not want, as I'm going to mention, you don't want your... Um, garlic to turn brown you all you want is for it to cook on a small soft flame and just stay bubbling so it can release its garlic taste on it as you can see right now um, I have let it bubble it's bubbling I'm not gonna let it turn brown I'm just gonna let it sit there in the heat to release some of its aroma and once it's ready, once I feel that the garlic is cooked, but not brown, I am going to actually stop it. I do stay looking out for the sauce. I don't do something else because I do not want to miss the point where I don't want to make sure I want to make sure that the garlic does not turn brown. So I do stay close to the sauce and make sure that it is appropriate once that is done which i would say it's almost ready i like to make sure that the garlic is not white you can see once it's cooked it starts i'm losing its white color and becoming more a little bit translucent so i am letting the garlic pieces get cooked properly because you're gonna eat it the garlic it's yummy it is really yummy so you can see I am mixing it to make sure. And I think we are pretty okay. Yes, because I'm going to start when I remove it from the heat. I'm going to remove it to another pan. So I'm going to remove it from the heat. So I can stay there. I'm going to let it cool before I transfer it to another um, container for the presentation. All right, so now we're going to peel our green plantain. You want to cut each end, and you want to slice through with the point only with the edge, just the skin. You want to nick the skin to make sure you're able to peel it. So I tend to do about two to three nickings, uh, um, cutting the, the peel, just with the point of the knife. And what I use with the point of the knife is I use it to lift the skin to peel the skin from the green plantain. Once I do that, then I use my crafty hands, right? And just start peeling the skin from the plantain. As you can see, comes off easily. And then do the same thing to the other side. Once you have the plantain, the green plantain peel. Sometimes it can be a little bit rough um, to pull. When it gives you trouble, you can use your knife, the tip of your knife, just to help you lift the skin. Now that I have my plantain cut, I mean peel, you want to cut the plantain in half an inch. You don't want it too thick you don't want it too thin. So now that I have cut my plantains and I have cut it about half an inch thick, I'm gonna take my olive oil, I'm gonna pour it, pour it. Um, I'm gonna pour it 
enough oil high you know the flame is medium and you're gonna let your oil sit there for a bit like for a minute a minute a minute and a half for it to warm up the beauty of, of this I already have prepped up my oil so my oil is actually hot enough so I can start frying so one thing you want to do is take out your plantains actually it does need a little bit more heat because it cooled off so once your oil is ready you're gonna put it in your plantains and in the oil I raised my oil, my flame a little bit higher so it can warm up quicker. As you can see, it's starting to bubble, sizzle the oil. So what you're gonna do right here is that you're gonna leave the plantains in oil on one side about, I would say, four minutes. You're gonna leave them for four minutes there so it can become yellow, right? And it could cook on one side. Once you have it cooked on one side, then we are going to flip them over and let them cook for another four minutes. About another four minutes. It's actually not too long that we leave them there. It, ideally, you would like to have a fork because it's easier to flip them. As you can see, we only barely have a good two, two minutes almost here. They're cooking. So... I think they're almost there. Yeah, they're starting to turn yellow. Um, I will leave them a little bit longer because you want to make sure that it's well cooked on one side before you turn it to the other side. As you can see, it. So we're gonna let this cook. Just finish. I'm just flipping my 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 plantains around. Because as you can see, they are cooked on one side. You do not want them to become yellow. I mean, like golden brown. All you want them is a light yellow color um, that shows that it, it is cooked. And you want to put them close enough so that the oil can be there and it'll cook. I'm going to leave it there for another um, three minutes. I said about four but it all depends also on your flame of your oil make sure it's not too high because the higher you put it it's gonna actually become very golden and that's not what you want okay so right now i am letting this sit for a minute and we are gonna take them out and i'm gonna put them here on my wooden board so for those that do not have a tostones smasher your best option is to have a mug. And this is what I'm actually going to use because I don't own one. I just use a simple mug. It's easy for me to do that. So now that my plantings are ready, which I think they are, and I'm going to just test them out a little. They seem to be cooked, and yet they're getting golden, so I don't want that. I don't want them to overcook. Because once they're all cooked, they're not going to be good to smash. So you want to just make sure that they're just cooked enough for you to smash it. So you want to leave it about, like I said, three to four minutes um, to cook. As you can see, once that's starting to get golden. Now that they're there, I still leave the oil ready. I put them all to one side. And I'm going to take one. And you're going to take your mug. And you're going to apply some force just to smash it as you can see and I leave that there just enough they're hot so be careful they're hot so you don't want to burn yourself so you want to make sure those stories are nice and I tend to do this all first um, instead of starting putting so they can evenly cook um, and I don't have to worry about the tostones getting burnt so i try to do them evenly whoops sorry okay. 
Now that my tostones are ready, now I'm gonna put them in the oil. As you can see, you can hear the oil. It's nice and ready. And I will put low the oil. As you can see, they're frying. You don't have to leave them for too long because they're already partially cooked. So all you want them is to get that nice brown color onto it. Turn them around so they can get that golden color to it. As you can see, that one's almost done. Um, and basically, we are about to literally take them out because they're pretty cooked already. So right now, I'm going to turn off my stove because we don't want them to overcook. Now that my tostones are ready, I'm going to have a plate with a paper towel just so it can absorb the excess oil from frying it. Right? To eat these, it's good to eat them while they're warm. Do not, you let them cool off, right, a little bit, but you don't want them cold. You want to make sure that they are warm enough for you to eat them. Now, we're going to let them, let the oil be removed a little bit to, so I like to pat, pat it with a paper towel just to remove some of the excess oil from the, Tostones. Now that I've taken the the tostones, which are the fly plantains, out of the frying pan, then I will put it in a plate with paper towel, just so the paper towel could absorb some of the oil that was used while it was frying. When I'll let it cool off a little bit. And now that I have ready or I have my garlicky um, mojo sauce ready I'm and it's cooled, now I'm going to put it into a small container so we're able to actually eat it. So now I just have my tostones ready. As you can see here, I have my little sauce um, ready here. And my tostones are ready and you can grab a toston right now and grab some of that garlic that you have there or the excess oil the garlic and you're ready to actually taste it mmm I do want to say that that garlic it's so yummy I love garlic but if you really love this recipe I will actually ask you to please join us for next in two weeks our next recipe which we will be making Colombian arepas um, we'll be honoring um, George Samank's um, heritage so please join us either through Facebook or our web page or our YouTube video and look at our upcoming recipe. And if you like this recipe, please take some pictures and post it on our Facebook because we would love to showcase what you have made at home. Well, everyone have a great day and I hope you enjoy the events that we have for Hispanic Heritage Month. Bye-bye.